musicals and plays is really important to me. Like, if I didn't do them, I don't really even know what I would do because that's like my main thing that I do. And if there was no such thing, I literally do not know what I would do. <laughs> I honestly would say theater was the most formative childhood experience I had outside of my house. If you open your mind, I think it just brings all the, the fun people, I think, not you know people who want to just do weird things and put on a show. And I think that one thing that's quite incredible about the ACT is that we were taught to be good people in addition to being um, learning how to be a performer. If you're here, you're all in. you got to do this because you love theater. You have to be here because you love theater. I would go back today, right now, if I could, and do it all over again, 10 times. My name's Corinna and I'm 10 years old. I'm Corinna Smith and I'm 20 years old. I think I was very outgoing. I feel like being kind of a loud kid kind of goes without saying when you're that involved in theater and singing. And besides that, I was in dance classes. I kind of did everything involving the arts when I was younger. My name is Henry and I am nine years old. I'm Henry Brown and I'm, uh, I can't even think of my age, I'm 18 now. I was, I was a pretty shy kid in that, and that's, you know, one of the main things that I loved about theater is it helped you come out of your shell. I'm Josh Busher, and I'm 12 years old. I am Jacob Busher, and I am also 12 years old. My name is Josh Busher, and I'm 21 years old. And my name is Jake Busher, and I'm also 21 years old. And so when we got these roles opposite of each other, it was honestly kind of the dream because it was we each had our own little moment. And yeah, I've, honestly, ever since, I think Susical really cemented my enjoyment and my love for theater, and it's honestly carried me through to this day in terms of my experiences in the world. Hey, Grace, can you look right at me and tell me your name and how old you are? Gracie, I'm 13. My name is Gracie, G-R-A-C-I-E. So Grace is 23, and uh, she has something called Dravet syndrome, which is a severe form of epilepsy. So she has seizures, and they're the grand mal seizures, um, anywhere from once a week to a couple times a week. But the good news about Grace is that she's a really, really happy kid who's involved in all sorts of things and who's really been embraced by the community. Terry had talked to us and just really emphasized that she felt like this would be a great show for Grace to be a part of, great experience for her, so we were all about it. I mean, I never had a hesitation because I just, why not? This would be great. And honestly, I was super excited to see how the rest of the cast would embrace her. How would the kids handle it? I feel like it's kind of something that always went without saying, you know, everybody here, like no matter who you were or what your background was, was always accepted with open arms and was, we were all taught, you know, to be welcoming. Trinity, don't be shy. You got your hand up. That's absolutely right. That whole section back there, you guys got to do that big, huge scream because that's when the chaos, when that would, can you practice that? Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> You're being dropped. You're about to die. One, two, three. Ah! Yep, that's it. When they do that, you all skedaddle. My name is Terry Dvorak, and I am directing both Susical and Jungle this year. <clears throat> there is a definite need for children's theater. I want to do the curtain call just really quick. Do you know what I mean when I say curtain call? The bows. Tell them really loud, Elise. The bows. The bows. OK, I want to do that again, because we did that really great in the building, and now we're a little jumbled. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, and her kids got to a point where they were old enough to, to be more self-sufficient, and she was really looking for something to do that made an impact. I said, I'd really love us to have a dedicated kids show. Up to that point, 
They did one show a year in the summer that included kids. It was never a show dedicated to kids, necessarily about kids. It was a show where we incorporated uh, children into a cast of adults. I think the biggest thing with my mom's intentions with the Children's Theater Program is she wanted a place where kids could do theater even if maybe they weren't the best at it. Our girls left the Wickershines in the wing and they bowed without their boys. Oh. So. Oh. 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 We provided a, an opportunity to do what they love to do in a safe space where they felt comfortable and, and not self-conscious. It never was about doing it perfectly. It was always just about each kid doing their best, but most of all, Terry just made it mostly about having fun, especially as a shared community. It was always about the experience to this day. It's about the experience. It's never going to be about that final product. And if you're lucky enough to get both, which I think we are often, wonderful. Then you've got something magical. But it can't be about that. It just can't be. auditions actually started the minute you walked in the door? When Grace auditioned, the whole thing was such an unexpected experience for me because as a child I hadn't been involved in theater. So when I showed up for the auditions with her, I was like, whoa, there were a lot of kids and a lot of parents and it was a lot. I was just thrilled, honestly, that she got up there and auditioned and really wanted to do it very independently and in my opinion did it much more successfully than I had ever imagined and I sat in the seats and got teary watching her do that. Ten at a time you're going to be taken into the other room. You're going to be asked to sing your song 30 seconds or less. We're going to go and I'm going to see you in there, okay? Everybody's going to do great. You're going to have fun. No nerves. We're very nice people, okay? Nothing to be afraid of, okay? See you in there. You can turn down to the first. Oh, yeah. Come on in, guys. Okay. It was always so nerve-wracking in, in that, I mean, you walk in and you try and find your friends and whatever, but you're all, you feel the energy in there. Everyone's so nervous. So knock our socks off. This is your chance, okay? I don't want to see your hands in your pockets. Okay. So I remember being intimidated, especially by the panel of judges, as that's such an incredible thing to go into for the first time. You're 11, 12 years old, and you see four people, just their whole job is to just look at you and make decisions. It's really important that you pay attention and you learn quickly, because you don't get a lot of time to learn this, okay? Okay, one, two, go. Because I have wings. Okay, you guys are staying for the cat, so come in. So cool, I remember during the auditions, there was like a callback, I guess you could say, and it was actually me and two of my friends who I grew up with in high school, um, named Scott and Torben, we both were brought into this room and we almost did like an improv session for Terry. Um, and I just remember I was just being so silly. Hello everyone, <laughs> welcome to the show that's about 
about people that like to talk to you. Today we have Johnny Cash, Woo! Elvis Presley, and Marshall Falk. <laughs> Jacob and Josh, I like them both. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah. The one yeah. If I call your number, please stay. Otherwise, thank you very much. 35, 26, 42, 64, 59, 25, 45, 39, 38, 12, 13, 54, 63, 56. Please come with me. And I was Horton the Elephant from Horton Here's a Who. It wasn't calculated, it wasn't intentional. They both just did really great at their auditions and each got a really great part. All right, next. <laughs> Run into your brother. Being the cat in the hat, I kind of have to be wild and crazy and I have to do a lot of improv. And I feel like I can relate to that at home. And that was such an incredible part. I think that was like the first time in my, in my life as a kid doing theater where I was like, wow, like, this is awesome, like I'm right here, I can, I can make the people laugh, whether it's the audience, whether it's myself, or whether it's people on stage with me, and that was something that was so cool to me, and I would love to play that role again someday. Seriously. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I got Mr. Mayor. I say this with firmness and terrible sorrow. Young man, we will deal with you come tomorrow. Make sure you're facing out for that because good job. Susical was really special because um, I was a bird girl in the show and a couple of my other really good friends were also bird girls. If people don't know, it's kind of the bird girls are kind of like a little girl group in the show. Well, this year I knew that I probably wasn't going to get a lead because I had the lead last year, so I knew that I wasn't going to um, probably get the lead. Honestly, Susical specifically, I actually remember reading the cast list in the lunchroom at my school and kind of being pretty devastated that I hadn't gotten either like Maisie or Gertrude or some lead part because I'd gotten one, you know, the year before. We tried to take turns. Like, you better own that lead the year you get it because there's a darn good chance next year, even if you are the best person, you're not going to get it. We talk about it, this is a team and every, you know, and you hear that, your drama teachers tell you the smallest part is as big as the biggest part. In theater, you have to be, you really, really have to be okay stepping back and saying, I might be the most unimportant person in this entire thing. And I might have five minutes of stage time, which to me seems like something that isn't even worth doing. But I was taught that that's just as important as every other cog in the clock. and. Every piece puts together the puzzle in just the right way. Oh my gosh, I remember rehearsals. They were very organized, but also kind of crazy at the same time. Oh, they were the highlight of my weeks. We had rehearsals on Sunday nights um, every week for the duration of the show, which typically when we were doing the children's shows tended to be, I believe, between like three to five months would be the production time. It was just always a blast. It was always something to look forward to. And it was so, um, sad when it was over because every Sunday you felt like you needed to do something or like want to go to rehearsal but you couldn't anymore. I don't think there was anything more exciting to me in my childhood at that, at that point in time than uh, early April when we do the, the technical shows, we do the dress rehearsals at the Verona High School Auditorium. <laughs> about so that's why we rehearse that's why we call it a dress rehearse okay but guys you really gotta wait you gotta wait till your line's there okay um i don't know what more to say about that 
You just gotta do it, so let's try it again. I think that's probably one of the biggest things I took from rehearsals was trying to ride that line between we're here to have fun and this is clearly like a, a leisure activity that we're all doing, but at the same time, um, really having respect for someone's authority that's not in an academic setting. Okay. My mom and I have found time and time again that the key to working with children is to be so organized that they cannot poke holes in what you're doing. Because if a kid pokes a hole in your rehearsal process or your logic with something or your teaching, you've lost the group. One or two of, I think just one. So that part of rehearsal, you just have to have all of your tools ready to go in your toolbox. You have to know, okay, this is what we're gonna try. If this doesn't work, this is how we're gonna fix it. If we can't fix it, we are going to immediately start doing something else and we will get back to it later. I remember that once we established a routine, that pretty much stuck and it still sticks. You know what to expect when you come in. Everything's organized. You know what that rehearsal is gonna look like. My mission, I hate to keep saying me because this was a team of people. Our mission was to not cut. For the longest time, we were successful at that. We did not cut a single kid. If they wanted to participate, we had a place for them. But then the numbers got too big and then we had to start cutting and that became absolutely heartbreaking to me. Okay, I like this suggestion that they just said for you guys, instead of doing what I said, split. But you gotta remember to do this, okay? So half of you, whichever split and go. We were concerned, would she be distracting? Would she have too much fatigue? Would the other kids get impatient? You know, all these scenarios that, as parents, we were trying to sort of um, foreshadow and, and compensate for. And at the end of the day, you know, hindsight, as I look back, it all went better than we thought it would. And I don't want to speak for other families, but I have the sense that for at least a lot of the families, a lot of good came from it. It does good for Grace, but it does good for everybody else who's there too, witnessing and stepping up to help or adjusting and realizing, oh, we can still make this work. Opening night was incredible and I think again that really was like one of the first times where I was like wow I want to do this for the foreseeable future this is this is a feeling that is beyond incredible and it's something again that I've had some time away from now but it makes me all the more excited to get back to it hopefully someday soon. All right, Burger Girls, all of you sing something for me. That was probably one of my favorite things was opening night. I mean, everyone's just electric and ready to put it on, but scrambling still. And it always seemed like it was this close to falling apart, but then it always just came together and worked. The, little, the littler you are, the guppy with the goggles. Yeah. The bigger has the lights, and the special yeah. fish are only six special dancers. Yeah. Okay. And they do know who they are. They, they wear a different they. costume. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And with theater, there's so much pressure riding on that one night, specifically usually opening night. Um, so in a way, it was incredibly intense because it felt like, oh my gosh, if I make one mistake tonight, all of this work, three months of work is just a waste. Which is funny because looking back on it, nobody necessarily minds if they see young kids performing and someone slips up, right? Is this orange? Yeah. Is it orange? Yeah, it's orange. Yeah, it's Real. 
Opening nights are so great because there's still such the promise of what's to come. You've been rehearsing a show in the privacy of your cast and your crew for months, and you finally get to share it with the world. So exciting. The energy, those kiddos, the energy. And they have rehearsed like all week long, so they're exhausted. They went to school that day because we always, our opening night is always on a Thursday night. So they would then come after going to school, but it didn't matter. They were so excited. I just always remember on opening night, everybody standing behind the curtain, kind of like whispering along the lyrics with the overture as it was playing and just being so excited. There are a few things that I feel that are quite as liberating and perhaps as um, pride-inducing as watching a group of perhaps 80 people, perhaps 200 people that you've been working with for months do something that they're only going to be able to do one, two, three, four, maybe five times and do it to the best of their capacity. play a part like this where you know rambunctious energetic there really weren't any rules for it um, it allowed me to just branch out and be somebody that I think I always wanted to be but theater really opened that up um, and also just along with that having this shared experience with others that went beyond the classroom sharing a show and you know sharing the spotlight if you will you know with so many other people you really learn to kind of be humble and be able to let other people shine like even more so than you are and really doing things for the benefit of the group I feel like it really helped me in aspects like that as well. When she started to get involved and and this I think carries over to to her today uh, she has a sense of pride she wants to be relevant and wants to have a meaningful thing to talk with you about. Um, so being able to talk to you or whomever about being in the musical gave her pride. Always eager to
I always remember every show we would always do this after opening night and the curtain went down every you could just hear everyone screaming like that they were so excited that we'd done such a great show and that was that's always something I remember from every show. Good job, I mean, those are some of my favorite memories of when I was little, and I just had so much fun at the ACC. It's just influenced me in you know, big ways just to change who I was. I mean, I was shy when I started out, and it just made me so I want to talk to people and do things now and just start being excited with this stuff. So being in front of the audience makes you think that we're all just people, so you might as well, you know, live your life to the best instead of just toying around and acting like a fool. I feel as if um, the arts has been a different niche for me and theater has been a different niche for me that has allowed me to look at myself from much more of a community perspective as opposed to an individual perspective. And in turn, has allowed me to look at the people in my life and look at the environments that I am associated with in my life with a critical eye and, and really care about the individuals in them and how the individuals are functioning while also looking at myself and, and what I need to be do to be making, what I need to be doing to make this given thing work. I learned a lot of things about how to become a young adult, how to become a young man, um, how to really thrive and foster in this world, but a big part of that is just this selflessness that you need to bring in this space, which, which can be very hard. I couldn't be doing this show if it wasn't for the, uh, the five stage managers that we have, or the technical crew, or the directors, or everyone around me that really contributes to this larger goal. I think it will really help me because I learned um, how you need to stand, what you do, when you need to improvise. I've had many experiences on stage when things will go wrong, and I've learned from that that if that happens, you just have to keep going and hope that the audience doesn't notice too much. It definitely helped me boost my confidence and just overall um, presence in public settings, but I also think it really helped me build just my teamwork abilities and being able to put something together with a group of people and collaborating with so many people from a super young age. That person that's right there, if they, and Jamie had the same problem on her side. Everybody came on, on stage and then they asked Jamie a million questions. This saved me, like this was, this became my purpose and my job. I could do it with my kids. I didn't get paid, but it was a job, and it, and it really fulfilled something in me. And on top of that, then, then I made these wonderful friends, and I got all this theater knowledge like from these guys. I mean, they mentored me, they taught me, years and years of experience, people here, and we're a family. I mean, we are a family now. These are my dear friends. It was a real, it was a gift. It was a good, good thing. It was a great thing for Grace, it was a great thing for our family, for Grace's siblings, and it was a great thing, I think, for the other kids and the other adults who got to interact with her. I think her involvement in theater has made her a more confident adult. That's awesome. Very nice. Do you love orange? Do you love orange? I love orange. I love orange. Hey. I love orange. Very well. Thank you. I think that just seeing her be able to experience all of that was so special because, you know, this is a community theater, but there's tons of other community and regional theaters and other areas that take it very professionally and, you know, maybe wouldn't take it upon themselves to invite her to do shows. Working with someone like Grace, yes, it might take more time. You might have to explain things a few more time. It might slow up some parts of the rehearsal process because she just can't pick things up as quickly. But our goal was never, we're making the best show. Our goal was, we're providing the best experience. Therefore, we were willing to do what it takes to, to make someone like Grace feel welcome. I think that inclusivity by letting, allowing Grace to be a part of this, um, I remember she really enjoyed it. It was something so special to her. And it meant just as much to us because we saw that you know, she could have this, this, this part in this show that was just as important as any other part and she could make a difference, and she did make a difference. We had several different parents come up and say, you know, I don't really know you very well, but I know you're Grace's mom, and I just want to say 
we're so glad she was in the show and our, or our kids were so glad and or I think that it really made a difference. And as years and years and years have gone by, have, be, parenting a child with a, a severe disability and, and somebody with the type of sweetness and personality that Grace happens to have, she and, and folks like her have this ability to bring other people together. It's just um, a really cool thing. Uh, it's like an equalizer in, in kindness. It brings people together and they're kind and they're good. It doesn't mean that they are fake. It just, I think, makes people pause and we're also hurrying in, in the way we speak and in the way we act. And when you're around Grace, you automatically do go slower in the way you talk and in the way you react to things. This is one of the best experiences our kids can have. We are so incredibly lucky to have it in Verona. And so we want to thank that um, all the people who are involved with this. The first person we want to thank is Terry. I'm not going to lie, like by then, all of us feel a lot of satisfaction when a kid or a parent comes up and says, thank you so much, this was such a wonderful experience. I remember we all had cast t-shirts, so after the show ended, what you do is you have your cast t-shirt, it was a blue Susical shirt, I remember, bright blue, and then you all have kids with Sharpies, and they very, in a very um, unrefined way, <laughs> they write their name on the back of your shirt. After the show and the cast party, it makes me very sad. I, yeah, it's just it's over and it's gonna be a while until I can try out again. Every year we come back and expect to see the same faces and people, and you know it's like, all right, we'll see you next year. You know you're gonna get the lead next year. I think it taught me so much from a young age, just about being there for people around you and being able to share a passion with people and basically build a family around that. Theater is like the one place where anybody can come into this and you know, it's just, it's there for them. It is, it will always be there for them. I feel like it's all the things that lead up to that moment that make it possible for that moment to work. But I can't tell you exactly why all those moments beforehand worked other than we were never unwavering about our goal. And I believe we lived what we believed. It was a, it's a happy place. You work, but it's a happy place and you're gonna have a great experience.